I've spoken to God. Well, maybe it spoke to me. The reason I say it is because I don't know who talked to me, if anyone at all. With all the drinking and drugging, it's really hard to say. Whatever or whoever that was, it came to me in the most vivid dream. It happened in Ramadi, Iraq. I believe we were going on our 12th month of the deployment and had five more to go. At the time, our brigade was the hardest hit brigade since Vietnam. Our unit lost some really good guys, and I miss them every day. Alts, you showed me the ropes as a brand new private. Thank you. Just, I talked to you a few hours before you got killed. You set the standard for cool, calm, and collected. But fuck, was it tough losing Brooks and Gilbertson? When you guys left, everything changed. Iraq is the motherfucker. It's 120, 130, 140 degrees. Constant stress on your mind, body, and soul. And most of the time, there's no accountability when one of your brothers gets killed. When that IED explosion goes boom, everyone dies and that's it. The enemy is like a ghost. Scarface said it best. I've never seen a man cry until he's seen a man die. He was right, but we had to suck it up and keep moving. The mission was above all, they said. You have one day to grieve and bottle up the rest for later. Iraqis were crying too. Everyone was dying. Women, babies, my dog Sandy, everyone. And from the top down, soldiers were even committing suicide. This one high-ranking soldier stopped his convoy, stepped out of his vehicle, and shot himself. He lost several soldiers under his command. That's when I stopped my daily prayers. I called my mom one day and told her this, and she said, keep the faith. But how? When there's no God or religion in Iraq, that God I heard so much about on Sunday was supposed to swoop down and save us all from the chaos, twisted metal, the IED craters. Shield our eyes from all the dismembered bodies that plagued the streets. It was hard to see mangled hummers that came through the gate, the black body bags with your friends that were boarded on helicopters, never to be seen again. Seeing the remains of just his rifle that looked like scrap metal. Death runs this town, not God. Back on up, man. Doing. Yeah. What are they doing? What are they doing? One day we started partying. We had no other choice. Get shit done by day and party at night. We cut deals with Iraqi soldiers in exchange for whiskey, hash, and promethazine. As we said, fuck my life. This became the greeting of the day. Here today, gone tomorrow. So you might as well have fun while you're sitting in your 8x12 cell, passing around the hookah. But at your own risk, you could lose it all if caught. One night, I overdid it for sure. Got pretty messed up. My heart was beating super fast. Thought I was going to die. I closed my eyes as my hands lay over my heart. And eventually I started dreaming. I was laying on a bus bench somewhere in Ramadi. I was alone. There was newspapers scattered all over the area. I was freaking out. The place was a ghost town. All I could hear was the wind. Then out of nowhere, a voice spoke loud and clear. Be carefree, grateful, and everything will be okay. I felt this overwhelming calming effect take over my body and I woke up. It was the next morning. All my pain was gone. A new lease on life. Who was that? I felt a strong connection to him, the earth, and humanity like never before. It's been six years since my time in Iraq. Time flies. I didn't know that then, that I would think about my brothers who passed in Iraq every damn day. 
Was it all a dream? Iraq? The epiphany? Most days I just don't believe any of it ever happened. But ultimately, this has become my spirituality.